Well, this is a, a bit of a tough one. Uh, the end of this little segment, I probably uh, get a toast oven or uh, win a clock radio. Uh, basically, the question, uh, the paraphrasing, the questions that we're getting is, uh, uh, what is the most critical component uh, of making a boat seaworthy? And that's a toughie. Um, but uh, let me fall back on to uh, several years ago, I was invited to uh, uh, New London, Connecticut at the Coast Guard Academy. They were doing a seminar on uh, seaworthiness, offshore seaworthiness. And um, I was invited to uh, uh, give a talk at that. And everyone expected me uh, to be talking about seaworthiness now. Uh, hull to deck joints, uh, port lights, uh, companion ways, cockpit size, blah, blah, blah. That's what everyone expected. Uh, when I gave it some real serious thought uh, about what the most critical component of seaworthiness is, uh, the thing that came instantly to mind is the word fatigue. Um, if a boat is beating you up um, in terms of the ergonomics of the cockpit, of how you're sitting, if whether or not you can uh, cook in the galley, whether or not you can use the head without getting thrown all around, whether or not you can lay in a bunk and there's leaf cloths and a bunk is 30 inches wide enough uh, for a normal adult to sleep and yet still be kind of tucked in. Uh, if you're tired, if you're uh, beat and a boat is beating you and the arms are aching and there are no effective places to hold on and you, you're shuffling all over the place and you're jerking and there's no way to press your feet uh, when a boat is healing sailboat. Uh, it, it knocks the hell out of you and it, it, it creeps up on you. It, it, it's not something that you really become aware of. Uh, years, years ago, when, uh, when I was in college, I was uh, doing uh, deliveries. We were bringing boats up from Florida. I was doing pickup crew work. Uh, it was good money. Everybody in those crews at that time were probably 18 to 25. I don't think anybody was over 25 years old, and everybody was somewhere uh, a little, maybe a little older than 18, maybe. So we were talking about young, tough, uh, uh, fairly uh, athletic, uh, young, strong men. Um, and what I became conscious of at that time, and it's never actually left me, uh, was that the boats that we were moving uh, were beating the hell out of us. Uh, some of the center cockpit Morgans we were bringing up, some of the other boats that we were moving, uh, you know, if you can't brace your feet effectively, if the, 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 the angle of the companionway, something that nobody even talks about, the angle of the steps going up and down, and what you're holding on to. Uh, when I saw, including myself, young, strong men uh, getting very, very tired, uh, especially after the second day, not sleeping well, not eating well, um, and aching and, and, and trying to find comfortable places to sit and hold on to the wheel. Most of those boats didn't have autopilots in those days. Um, to see how fast uh, everybody crashed. And what happens is, is that when you get tired, you don't realize how tired you are. And they're just starting to put this together with people driving automobiles. I don't know what took them so long. Um, but it's the same thing on a boat. Uh, you start doing and making dumb decisions and bad mistakes. Um, and I don't care how well a boat is built, how well secured the deck is bolted on, uh, what kind of nuclear port lights you have, and, and whatever else you can, we sum it up, and it's all over the Shannon website for that matter. But when you put all of that stuff together, uh, if the people that are using the boat are not comfortable if they don't have places to snug and tug in, uh, especially if the weather gets a little bad. Although I have to tell you, it's not, you don't have to be in storm conditions for fatigue to run right over you. You 
do not. It's not just storms. Um, as I found out, as I mentioned when I was a very young man, it's not just storms. It's long trips. Uh, it can beat you up very, very badly. So no matter how well the boat is built, uh, it doesn't make any difference if uh, the cockpit seats are wrong, if the galley is not you can't brace yourself and be able to make coffee, be able to make some food. Uh, those are the things of the head, as I mentioned, the bunks. You need lee cloths, otherwise you roll, roll around. If all of this stuff is not exactly right, uh, it conspires to beat up the people on the boat, and thus the boat is not seaworthy. Uh, so you can put construction aside, totally aside, completely aside and focus on the ergonomics and the livability of the boat. Very, very hard thing to do because you see a boat at a boat show or you go to a, a buying a used boat, uh, you go to a boat yard or a marina and you're walking around a boat and every, you're looking at the bunks and you're looking at the fabric and the, uh, on the cushions and uh, you're not spending enough time to realize whether or not the boat is, is, uh, is safe. Uh, safe being comfortable safe, construction aside. The key is, is to spend some time on the boat without a salesman, you know, and un spend a couple of hours, get the salesman out of your face uh, so it's just you and your partner, spouse, uh, actually sitting, laying on a bunks. You can't do this at a boat show. Uh, but after the boat show, uh, spend some time alone on a boat. Uh, you don't have to be an old sea dog with the years and years of experience, by the way, uh, to tell whether or not this boat is comfortable. Uh, because your body, your legs, your ass, your shoulders will tell you very, very quickly uh, whether or not this boat is, is comfortable and safe. You can lay on a bunks. There are hand grabs in the head to be used. There's a way that you can brace yourself when a boat's healing and imagine a boat healing over, not just sitting tied to a dock. Uh, everything is safe tied to a dock. Uh, if you take your time, spend some time on the boat alone before you buy it. I don't care, new boat, used boat, it doesn't matter. All right? uh, and if you have an existing boat, See what you can do to set up some handrails and hand grabs and places that you can attach yourself onto. Uh, because I'll tell you, no matter, as I've said now, it doesn't matter how well built the boat is, if everything else, the ergonomics and all the rest of that stuff is wrong, that boat, that boat is never, never going to be safe.